Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today the mice are flying in to celebrate a birthday on the inside and outside of this card. So we're using Just Plain Awesome, More Magic Messages, Offset Sayings Birthday, the Honeycomb Backdrop with Canned Pumpkin, Honeycomb Shaker Gift Tags in Fake Tan, Large stitched rectangle stackables in Blue Jay and Moonstone. Secret Garden Window. Giant Happy Birthday in Blue Jay. And Stripes and Sprinkles 12 by 12 paper. Let's start by creating the background. I'm just positioning these three panels together. And I chose colors that I thought would look good. I'm making a masculine birthday card now. I particularly like the, this color combination myself, so it doesn't have to be masculine, but that was kind of what I was going for here. And I love that secret garden window. I think it's my new favorite kind of feature on a card. So I'm not even going to use it as an aperture, just as a design element in the background for these great little mice sailing in on their paper airplanes. So I'm going to stamp them out on some white cardstock and I'm using jet black ink, which is alcohol marker friendly and we'll be using Copic markers today. So ink those up, stamp them down. I inked and stamped them twice just to get a nice solid impression. Clean up my stamps. And I'm moving on to stamping the Honeycomb Shaker gift tag with one of the sentiments from More Magic Messages. And this is going to be heat embossed in white. So I want to prep my tag with some anti-static powder. And then I will stamp it in clear ink. And once that's stamped down, I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder. Make sure I don't have any excess powder anywhere on the tag. And then I'll heat that up with a heat tool. And here we have our sentiment. And I wanted just to highlight it a bit. So I'm using whatever ink was on my brush. <laughs> and then decided I wanted to come in with some Lawn Fawn Pumpkin Spice ink just to darken it up a little bit. I'm not really looking to darken the edges or the inside, just little spots here and there. I don't know, kind of a mottled look. Wipe the ink off of the embossing and now we can color our images. And I'm starting with these airplanes. They're going to be white. <laughs> so I'm using a cool gray to give some shadows and I'm figuring out where my shadows are with this light color, so the C0. And I'm deciding that inside the airplane and underneath. So inside and underneath, decided where they were all, kind of mapped that out with my light color. And now I'm coming in with a slightly darker one, the C2, to reinforce that shadow. So inside and underneath. I'll just keep thinking that as far as where I want my shadows. Now, I can darken that up a little bit more just in the darkest corners or recesses of the airplanes. I want to make sure that they stay looking white. And, and that's why I'm being real cautious with the amount of shading that I'm using on these airplanes. I know I can get a little heavy handed when it comes to shading. So just in the folds, the deepest folds of these airplanes. And then I decided I also want where the airplane wings are down a little bit. That's going to be a bit shaded too. So the sun is coming from above. And so there's just a little bit of shading as those wings come down. Now for my mice, I want them to be gray as well, but I want them to not look like the gray in the airplane. So to make the airplanes pop out as a, a white airplane, I'm putting a blue color. So this is the B95, the grayest family in the blue color. So the nines um, to give them a gray blue, kind of to match the moonstone color on the front of my card. I'm finding the shadows with this 
uh, B95, so that's my darkest color. And I like to put some shadow around their eyes. I feel like it gives that look of the eye being recessed a little bit. And now I can blend that into the rest of the body with the B91. And that's the lightest. And I think it's kind of a dark, I mean, it's not dark, but <laughs> it's not one of the lightest blues out there. So once I have that blended up uh, slightly out of the B95, then I'm going to take my cool gray and blend it up further. And that's what's going to make these mice look like they are gray, not blue mice. <laughs> now here comes that cool gray, so the C0. And as I blend out the blues, it really does work well because it's kind of a gray blue. But also, if you look at those airplanes now, they do look white. They look whiter, I think, because of that bit of difference between the blue and the gray. Adding some orange scarves with the YR65 and 68. Now, I always hesitate with this color combination because of where I live. So uh, this is Packer Land, which is green and gold. It's our, you know, the Green Day Packer football. Um, but I really do like this blue-orange combination. I just don't think I can give this card to any of my nephews that are like, <laughs> big Packer fans. because These are bear colors, and, and those are our biggest rivals, the, the Chicago Bears. It's just interesting how meaningful colors can be. Well, uh, I colored their little cheeks and ears with the R02. I wanted them pink, red, but uh, that's kind of an orangey one, so they kind of blend in well. And now I'm just adding the coordinating dies, and I'll cut those out with my die cutter, and here they are, so super cute. Now to arrange everything on the card front. I believe there are so many options. So these hexagons just work so well together. And, and I'm just looking, now I wouldn't put the little one on top of the big one because I have the sentiment on there, but I'm just showing that they could be positioned in so many ways. Now, the first way that I show is the way that this card ends up, but uh, I'm gonna show two different arrangements just to show that there's really no right or wrong way to put this together. And I'm going to speed this up a little just so we can watch the arrangement happen. Um, and also I'm bringing in the little elements of the hexagons that came from the honeycomb backdrop. I love the stitch detail on those and, and they just make a great little embellishment for the card. So here's that second arrangement and there are there are so many others that that you could do as well. So just I guess why I'm showing this is I think this is a great background to show some geometric shapes and and kind of get that well it can be a masculine look or just just a fun detail and then um just put your little elements on there wherever. I just think that it's a no fail a no fail type of background to to work for all these little images. All right, so here I'm just gluing all my little bits down, chose that first design and adding all these little trails for the airplanes and some pieces I'm going to pop up with some foam tape and others will just lie flat on the card. Now, if you notice, the sentiment says just a little note. So this could just be a little note you could send to somebody, but more often I seem to need birthday cards. And so I love using these types of sentiments to then add more inside. And so it'll say just a little note wishing you a happy birthday. Or it can be one of those thinking of you cards that you can easily turn it into thinking of you on your birthday. So in my stash of cards, I have a lot of those cards. The ones that are just for every day, which are great to have on hand. But if I need a birthday card, they can quickly turn into that as well. 
And not just birthday, it can be just a little note wishing you a happy graduation or celebrating your new job. Lots of options. And one thing I really like about the way Lawn Fawn does their sentiments is there are many freestanding sentiments that work well together. All right, back to our card front here. So when I have a tag on the front of my card, I like to finish it off with some twine or a ribbon or something, or as in this case, a brad. So something just to to attach it to make it look like there is a reason that hole is there. And so I used a needle and just some foam that I had to poke that hole through and put in a brad. And now we can move on to the inside. And here are those sentiments I'm talking about. So this is the offset saying birthday. And it says, wishing you a very. And I'm using my ruler to line it up, make sure it's straight. And I can close that misty door right on top of that ruler and pull that out of the way. And I'm using a fake tan ink to stamp that down, wishing you a very, and then the a giant happy birthday die to complete that sentiment. It's funny, whenever I make a card and I show somebody in my house, they always look inside the card. They look at the front and then they open it up and I never have stuff in the inside and they're like, why do I keep looking inside? I know there's nothing in there. So hey, now they'll have something to look at. <laughs> well, adding another little mouse in there and a trail and then all that's left is to adhere the main panel to the front of the card. And then this card is all done. So just a little note, wishing you a very happy birthday. To go with the theme of our paper airplanes, here's a plane you can make with or for your card recipient. Using a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper, I scored it down the middle lengthwise and then folding that and I'm using my bone folder, which is a nice thing. As paper crafters, we usually have the best tools for paper projects, and that's paper airplanes, right? So now I'm just folding the corner down into a right triangle and making sure that I have that corner nice and tight and then reinforcing it with my bone folder. Again, folding that one more time. And I'm going to do that to both sides. And the main focus here is to keep that point as straight as possible. Now, regular printer paper is a little easier, but I really like this double-sided paper for this. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to fold it in half. And that's where it looks a little bit more uh, stealth like than just a regular paper airplane. Now we're going to fold those little corners up just to the edge. You might want to watch this a couple of times. I know when I was looking at how to make this, I had to watch it a couple of times. But you will impress those, those uh, recipients with this paper airplane. Once I have that folded, those little ones, fold that point back up. Flatten it with your bone folder and then turn it over again and fold the opposite side down. Pressing again as you go, kind of like ironing. <laughs> now you're going to fold it in half lengthwise and bend both sides of those wings down. And again, trying to make sure that that point stays nice and crisp. See, my point is getting a little bit too, too much paper in there. So I'm just ironing it out with my bone folder that I can press that back in. And I know with this uh, pattern paper, it's a little thick, but as a paper crafter, I love having the print on both sides and well, it matches my card, right? So you'll impress your recipient with your fabulous card and your awesome airplane. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspired you to create a card using a geometric background and continuing the sentiment and theme inside. Thanks for watching and have a great day.
बाय